Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're gonna to be solving the leak code question, diagonal traverse. Okay, so in this question, uh, we're given a matrix of M by N elements, okay? So we have M rows and N columns. So one thing you wanna notice is it's M by N, and that means that uh, the number of rows and the number of columns do not have to be the same. They could be the same, but they do not have to be the same. Okay, perfect. And what we wanna do is we wanna return all elements of the matrix in diagonal order as shown in the below image, okay? So this is how it's going to work. Uh, I think this image explains it pretty well and it's pretty easy to understand what the question is asking for. So in this case, we're given a matrix. So we have one, two, and three in one row. Then we have four, five, six in the second row. And in the third row, we have seven, eight, and nine. Okay, so all we're doing over here is a diagonal traversal, right? So uh, by diagonal, there's just two uh, different ways of motion for this question at least. So one of them is we move from the bottom left to the top right. And the other way is we move from the top right to the bottom left, right? So in this case, in the beginning, we start off from the bottom left to the uh, top right. That's just the rule and that's what we need to follow. So by doing that, we get the element one. Now after one, there's nothing else to the top right of one. So in that case, we're gonna kind of take a turn and this turn goes around and goes gets us to two. So at two over here, we're gonna go to two and then four and uh, to the bottom left of four, we don't have anything. So we take another th turn and then seven, five, three, and so on and so forth. So I think the question itself is pretty easy to understand. And now let's see how we can solve this. And instead what I wanna do is I kinda of wanna go through my thought process of how I ended up solving this question. Okay, so let's actually, uh, I'm gonna start off by drawing a simple matrix and look at two of the possible ways we can solve this. So this over here is a four by four matrix, right? So we have four columns and we have four rows. And over here, we wanna perform the traversal, right? So the diagonal traversal. So there's two ways to look at this question. So the first thing that I wanna kind of go through is kind of going through it step by step, right? So how exactly is this going to end up looking like? So the first thing is, let's try to identify what are the two types of motions we have. And I kind of talked about this earlier, and the first motion that we have is we start at the bottom left and we go to the top right. So this is one way of moving our traversal. Now the second way of motion is we start at the top right and go to the bottom left. So it's something like this. So our traversal is gonna start off with one, and then we go to two, then one, two. We're just alternating between these two types of motion. So let's see how this looks like. So in the beginning, we're gonna go through uh, A over here, okay? So that is going to be the first thing. So we went through A over here and we're gonna add that to our resolved list, okay? So after doing that, we're gonna take a turn and we're gonna get B and E, okay? And we're gonna add them and then we're gonna add that to our results uh, list over here. So let's just kind of understand what is happening. Uh, okay. So let's just see how we can kind of simulate this uh, happening in terms of code. So one thing you can notice is we get A and after we're done with a traverse, a traversal one, we change direction. And the way we change direction is we move to the right by one. So we go to A to B, and then we perform the second uh, traversal, right? So now we perform the second traversal and we get B and E, okay? So after we reach an ending, so after E, there's nothing to the bottom left of E. We're done, we're outside of the grid at that point. So now for moving from, trans from a two to one, then in this case, what we're actually going to end up doing is we're gonna move down by one, getting us to I. And from I, we're gonna do motion one, which is from bottom left to top right. So that gives us I, F, and C. So I just wanna do this for one more iteration to just show you uh, something else. So from one to two, we're gonna to move to the right, and now we're gonna do two, which gives us D, G, J, and M. I'm not gonna write it down, but that's what we're gonna end up getting, and we're gonna append them over here. Now, after this, uh, it gets a little bit confusing. Uh, not really confusing, but there's just a small change. So once you get the longest diagonal, right? So this over here is the longest diagonal that we're gonna get. And the observation that we wanna make over here is, so normally over here, when we're moving from motion two to one, we go down by one. But when you go down from M, well, there's nothing, right? There's nothing that we can actually do. So after getting the longest diagonal there is, the thing that we're kind of trying to understand is that we move to the right by one. Instead of moving down by one, we move to the right by one. And now we do uh, the first movement, which gives us N, K, and H. And now, instead of moving to the right for moving from one to two, we move down. So now we move down, giving us L, O, then we move right, giving us P. So this is one way of doing it. So this kind of way of solving it is kind of um, going through it like a simulation, right? 
And that is one way of solving it. And you could obviously do that, but I just want to go through a second solution, which I personally think is a little bit easier. Okay, so in this solution, we're going to kind of divide everything into diagonals as it is. So you can kind of think of this as one diagonal. So A itself is in one diagonal. BE is in one diagonal. Then we have IFC in one diagonal. And then we have all of this in one diagonal, all of this in one diagonal, all of this in one diagonal, and P itself in one diagonal. Okay, I'm just going to get rid of this because I think it's kind of... Uh, because I think it doesn't really look that good. Okay, but anyway, so the basic idea is that we're going to have a set of diagonals over here. And to the set of diagonals, we're going to add them in some sort of list. Now, this list over here is going to hold all of the diagonals, okay? So how exactly do we know how many diagonals do we get? So the question that we're asking is, what is the number of diagonals we get, okay? So we're given a m by n matrix, we know that. But using that, how many diagonals are we going to get? So uh, I'm sure there is some sort of way to answer this question, or maybe there's some sort of math formula or something, which already tells you what the answer to this is. But I personally just found the answer to, uh, through trial and error. So let's say we have a three by three, okay? So how many uh, diagonals do we have in this case? So in this case, uh, we have one diagonal here, then we turn, so that's second diagonal. This over here is the third diagonal, then we have four and five. So given the three by three, the way we got the number of diagonals is nothing else but three plus three minus one. And this gives us the total number of diagonals to be six minus one, which is five. So this actually did work in general, and it's actually something that does actually work. So let's say you're given a five by seven matrix, for example. So in this case, a five by seven would give us five plus seven minus one diagonals. And what is that? Well, that's nothing else but five plus six, which is 11. So we know we have 11 diagonals. Okay, so this is one of the observations. And again, I'm sure there is some sort of way to explain it using math, but I just found this using trial and error. Okay, so this is the first observation. So now we know the number of diagonals. So now that we know the number of diagonals, what exactly are we going to do with it? So to kind of talk about what we're going to do with it, let's just, uh, I'm just going to draw it out real quickly. Okay, so this is the same thing as our example question, and it's a three by three matrix, and that means that we have a total of five diagonals, three plus three minus one. So now we know we have five diagonals, and let's just kind of draw them out as lists. So this is a diagonal one, let's call this diagonal two, then we have diagonal three, diagonal four, and finally diagonal five. Now, how exactly do we know which element goes into which of these lists. So to do that, there's actually another small trick that we're gonna use. And I also actually just found this using trial and error, uh, but I'm sure there is probably a better way. So sorry if I'm not able to explain it properly. Okay, so to actually find out uh, where a certain element goes, what I kind of found out is uh, the index of whatever is at the very first over here is zero comma zero, right? We're at the zeroth row and the zeroth column. Now, if you notice, um, the sum of zero plus zero gives us zero. And uh, we're basically adding the i index and the j index. Now, when you try it out for anything else, nothing else is going to give us a value of zero. So one way of thinking about this is when we go to element at zero comma zero, so when we go to that certain index, we're going to go to the diagonal with that sum. Okay, what does that mean in practice, right? So in this case, we have zero comma zero, that's the index. So now, we add them up, zero plus zero equals to zero. And now we're gonna go to the zero, whatever list is at the zero index. So that means we're gonna go to this list over here. And after going to this list, we're going to add this value. So we're gonna add one to this list. Now we're just gonna repeat this for each and everything. And um, I'll just show you a few more iterations and you'll kind of see how this actually works. So over here, we're, we're going to have, what is the index of this going to be? Well, it's gonna be zero comma one, and this is going to have an index of zero comma two. So over here, we do zero plus one, and zero plus one gives us nothing else but one. So now we're gonna to go to the first value, oh, sorry, uh, whatever list or diagonal is at the first index, which refers to this, and to that, we're gonna add two. Now for three, we're gonna to go to the second one and add three over here. So um, I'll just do this uh, real quickly for everything else, and you'll kind of see how this actually ends up working. So one, zero, one, 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 two, and then we have two zero over here, then we have two one over here, and then over here we have two comma two. Okay, so real quickly, uh, one zero. So that gives us a sum of one, 
And since we have a sum of one, we're going to add it over here. This gives us a sum of two, so we add five over here. A uh, sum of three, we add six over here. So sum of two and one gives us a value of three. So we add it right over here, so we add eight there. And over here, two plus two gives us a value of four. So this over here actually ends up going over here. So if you look at this, this makes perfect sense. So just to real quickly show you what that uh, it's actually showing us is this is one. Then over here, we have this diagonal, which is two and four. Then we have this diagonal, seven, five, and three. And then we have six and eight, and then nine. Sorry, I don't know why I wrote four there, but that's supposed to be nine, okay? Uh, nine, perfect. So this over here now gives us all of the diagonals that we need. So using this information, we can construct our final end result that we are looking for. Whatever is at an even index, we're gonna add those values as it is. So the observation is really simple, right? So we have one, and after one, we're just adding two and four, right? So one, two, four. That's how our result should look like. So now when we end up at one, we're just gonna add the other value. So two and four, that's it. We're just gonna add them as it is to our results. But now when we go to two, you can notice that, so we had one, two, and four, but now we're gonna take a turn and go backwards, right? We're going in a backwards direction. So that gives us a value of seven, five, and three. And that is the opposite of what we have. So whenever we have an even value, we're gonna reverse those values and then add it to our result. So instead of adding three, five, and seven, we're gonna add seven, comma, five, comma, three. Then we add six and eight. And then finally, we're going to add nine. And this is the exact answer that they were looking for. And now all we gotta do is translate all of this into code, which should be pretty simple. Okay, so let's start off by finding out the number of columns and rows that we actually have. So the number of rows that we have and the number of columns, let's get both of them. And what is the number of rows going to be equal to? So the number of rows to get that, we're just gonna find the length of our matrix. Okay, so the number of lists inside of the list itself is going to be the number of rows, okay? And now to find out the number of columns, what we could do is we could find the length and we want to find out how many elements are there inside of each row to find the number of columns. So to do that, we can just go to matrix and we can go inside of one of the rows. So to do that, we can just do matrix zero. Okay, so we got that. And the reason we're actually calculating the number of rows and columns is well, like I said earlier, we want to know what is the uh, length of or the number of diagonals that we actually end up having. Okay, so now we're going to have our array called diagonals, okay? So diagonals, uh, there we go. And I'm just gonna copy this instead of writing it down each time, okay? So diagonals over here, uh, it's going to be a list. And to this list over here, so what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna add a list to it. So using list comprehension, what we could do is we could do four underscore in range. And what is the range of values going to be over here? So the range of values that we're gonna have is going to be the number of rows. And in other words, the range of values just refers to the number of diagonals we actually have. So how many lists do we really want? So the number of uh, lists or diagonals we want is going to be the number of rows plus the number of columns minus one. It's the same kind of formula. Okay, and one more question you might be having is why are we doing this when we could just do something like, you know, multiplying it with this value over here. Now, the reason for doing this is, I think the main difference between doing that and this is that by doing list comprehension, we, we're creating a new list uh, inside of our list over here. But when you just multiply that list, uh, so if you take this over here and you just multiply it by 10 or something, they're all going to be pointing to the same location. So that might actually change our results, uh, but yeah. Okay, so we have diagonals ready and we also have the number of rows that we need. So now all we gotta do is we wanna go inside of a for loop. So to do that, we're just gonna do for i in range and the range over here is gonna be the number of rows that we have. And now we're gonna do for j in range and this is going to be the number of columns. Okay, so now we're gonna go through each of our um, elements inside of our matrix. So let's go to our matrix and we're gonna go to i and j. So this is going to be the value of whatever it is inside of our matrix over here. Now, where exactly are we going to be adding this value? So to do that, we had another observation, which is we go to our diagonals list and we're gonna go to index i plus j. That's the index that we're going to go to. So then we're gonna append it, so dot append, uh, we're gonna append this value to that, okay? So this is all we're gonna be doing, and yeah. Okay, so at the very ending of this, um, we will be having our diagonals list, which is going to be completely filled with all the diagonals that we are looking for. So now the last thing that's left to do is to have our results array. So like I said earlier, 
uh, we're going to just take care of the first number uh, in the beginning, right? So let's go to diagonals and, uh, sorry, not first, the zeroth value, right? So what is the zeroth index? We're just going to add to, uh, to our result from the beginning, okay? So we have that for us, and now we want to get the rest of the values. So to do that, let's just do for x in range. And the range over here is going to start off at 1, since we're going to start iterating at the value 1, since we already got whatever is at the zeroth index. And over here, we, we're going to go all the way up to the length of the, uh, the diagonals, and that is the same as just doing this math over here, okay? So yeah, either of them works. And now we're going to get each of the values, and we want to check if this current index over here is even or not. So let's say it's odd, and if it's odd, uh, that's the same as when you're dividing it by 2, you get a remainder of 1. So to do that, if x mod 2 is equal to 1, that means we have, we're at an odd index, so then we're going to do res dot extend and the reason we're doing dot extend and not uh, dot append is because when you're appending it you're going to append the entire list to it and when you extend it you're taking the elements inside of this list and you're just adding those elements itself not the list by uh, entirely to our uh, results list that we have over here okay so we're going to do res dot extend and to this we're going to go to our diagonals and we're going to go to x perfect and if this is not the case then in that case that means that we are currently at an even index. So we're going to be doing the same thing. Let's just copy that over. And what is the difference going to be? Well, the only difference is that we want to reverse this. So there's uh, quite a few ways you could do this. You could uh, use the reverse function. But a simple way is to do this is we're going to iterate through everything. So uh, this means we're iterating through everything. And we're going to do so in a reverse order, so negative 1. Okay, perfect. So that's just the same as reversing it and then adding it to our results array over here. So that should be it. And at the very ending, all we got to do is return our result. Now, there's one small condition that we also want to take care of. And this is the condition when we have uh, an, an empty matrix. So let's take care of that. So if not matrix, that means that our matrix uh, looks like this, right? So there's nothing in it at all. So that's one condition, and another condition that we want to look for is if whatever is at the um, in the first row is also empty. So that means we have zero columns. So to do that, we can just do if matrix um, zero is also does not have a value, right? So or not matrix zero. So that means it's empty. So in either of those cases, we're just going to end up returning an empty list. So this takes care of our base case in which uh, our matrix does not have any value. All right, so this is, should be it for our question over here. Let's submit it, and it should get accepted. So finally, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Do let me know if you have any questions, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.